Hi, I'm Sharon Winsmith, a tax attorney, active investor, and your go-to resource for proven investment and tax planning strategies. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to make the vast majority of your expenses in life tax deductible. I'm going to teach you how to reframe the way you think about things and how to look at the highest costs that you have every year and make sure that you are exploring every opportunity to create a business or an activity that could turn that personal expense into something that you can claim as a tax deduction on your tax return and reduce your taxable income and the taxes that you pay every year. I want to be clear that I'm talking about how to do this legally. I know there's a lot of people, especially business owners, who underreport income or overreport expenses that aren't real expenses. I'm talking about the legal way to do this properly. There is no law against creating a business that's going to make your expenses that would have otherwise been more personal in nature into tax deduction. So I'll teach you how to think about the world in a way that you can do that or explore opportunities to create these tax deductions. I'll walk you through the three buckets of expenses, starting with expenses that are almost never tax deductible. I'll explain why you can't usually tax deduct those types of expenses. Then I'll walk you through a bucket where I talk about expenses that might be tax deductible, depending on what you're doing or how you think about and operate your business or side hustle or investments. And then at the end, I'm going to talk to you about expenses that should always be tax deductible. I want to be clear that in order to accomplish this goal of making the vast majority of your expenses tax deductible, you are going to have to either be a business owner or create some sort of side hustle or multiple side hustles. If you're a W-2 full-time employee, you are going to need to either buy a business or start a business, even if it's just a side hustle or something that you're doing on the side for a few hours a week, you're going to need something otherwise you are going to have a very long, difficult road to building wealth. And that is largely because of the taxes that you are paying on your income. So creating a side hustle as a full-time employee can allow you to start deducting expenses that would have otherwise never been deductible to you. As an employee under current law, you basically get no tax deductions for anything. So it's important to think about that, that if you are someone who doesn't currently own a business or operate a business or a side hustle of some sort, you need to think seriously about how you could do that and how much money you could be saving in taxes, let alone the additional income stream that you could build in the future. So I also want to be clear that I'm not going to talk to you about how to substantiate expenses or dive into the details of the specific tax laws that apply to each type of expense. The purpose of this video is just to think about the way you frame the world, your fact pattern, how you're thinking about things in a way that you can maximize the tax deductions that you claim every year. So with that, let's go ahead and start with the first bucket. And these are expenses that I say are almost never deductible. That's not to say that there's absolutely no situation where they could be deductible, but generally these are just expenses that you're just not gonna be able to claim a tax deduction for. So that includes household items and personal effects. So, you know, your shampoo and conditioner that you use every morning, you know, personal effects around your home, those are really not gonna be tax deductible because they're purely personal in nature. So unless you have some sort of business purpose for those you know, items, then they're not gonna be tax deductible. That applies to you know, a lot of these categories from your clothes. If you're not a police officer, for example, and I don't, I don't know if police officers have to buy their own uniforms or provided them, but if you don't have some kind of standard uniform that you have to use for your company that you're required to pay for, then typically your clothes are not gonna be tax deductible. Groceries and food, so unless you're you know, eating something around a business meal or something that I'll talk about later, that's typically not gonna be tax deductible, certainly not groceries you buy for your kids, for example. Personal gifts, so if you're giving someone, you know, like your, your parents a gift or something for the holidays or their birthday, that is almost never gonna be tax deductible. There can be, you know, creative ways to turn that into a tax deduction. I did put physical because I know there's this trend towards, you know, doing more experience type gifts where you maybe take people somewhere and do an experience as opposed to physical gifts, like giving someone, you know, a, a, piece, of a piece of clothing, for example. If you do do an experience type gift where you take someone somewhere, you can get creative and make that a tax deduction. There are ways to do that. I'm not gonna dive into that in detail here, but it's important to understand that you can take something that would never be tax deductible and in some cases make it tax a tax deduction. 
pets, you know, unless you own a pet business that, you know, an e-commerce pet business, for example, you're not going to be able to deduct things that relate to your pets. Trust me, I would love to be able to deduct the, the vet bills I have for my cats every year, but unfortunately that's not tax deductible. Social club memberships, this was a change a few years ago. So, you know, if you want to join a country club, it's, it's very difficult to impossible to make that tax deductible. And, you know, you'll see businesses have stopped kind of doing that because they're not getting the tax deductions for paying for those memberships for their, their C-suite executives. Personal entertainment, if you're going to a concert, a play, a sporting event, anything like that, those Broadway tickets, those are almost never going to be tax deductible. There can be situations where they are. Under current law, even if you're taking a client, you typically can't deduct those expenses. There might be a way to take employees to something like that and make it a tax deduction. Also... There are ways with all of these, honestly, there are ways to build a business around it to make it tax deductible. So for example, I follow a lot of people on TikTok who they do um, a lot of cooking and a lot of things around their foods and what they're making that day. And they make a lot of money from that. They have a lot of followers and they monetize that. They could potentially tax deduct their groceries and foods. So there are ways to really do it. I mean, I know that's a crazy example, and I'm not saying go out there and you know become a TikTok influencer, but I'm just saying that you really need to think creatively. So for example, I am a huge basketball fanatic. I go to a lot of basketball games. I spend a lot of money on basketball gear and it's a large personal expense for me. I used to have a basketball related business where you know it was a more of a content type business and i was able to actually tax deduct a lot of those expenses that that otherwise would have been personal so you can get creative here you can come up with ways to make an expense that wouldn't otherwise you know be able to, to claim on your tax return into a tax deduction if you build a business around that i'm not saying that makes a lot of sense you know just be, i wouldn't go start a, a pet business just because you know, you, you think you, you spend too much money on your dog every year, for example. But I just want to be clear that you can get creative with anything. You can create a business around anything and make almost anything a tax deduction, as long as that is a bona fide business expense. But for general purposes, unless you're, you know, again, a TikTok influencer, then these are typically a category of expenses that you're just going to have to stomach the fact that you typically can't claim tax deductions for that. You want to limit these to as little as possible because, if there's, I, I generally, I'm not opposed to spending money if it's something that I think is worth, you know, the value that you're paying, but I absolutely hate expenses that aren't tax deductible. So I personally try my best to minimize these because I don't want to be putting out cash that I'm not going to be able to, to claim a tax deduction on my tax return. So let's move on to the next bucket. And these are expenses that I call maybe deductible. So this depends on how you set up your business, how you operate things. If you take advantage of certain tax planning strategies, for example, you may or may not be able to deduct some of these expenses. In some cases, you might be able to deduct some of the expenses, but not all of them. So that's why these expenses are in the maybe category. They're either maybe or maybe not deductible, depending on what strategies you're taking advantage of, or you're not able to deduct 100% of that expense, you're only able to claim a piece of it. So I'm just gonna run through these really quickly. Gym memberships, there can be a way to offer that as a, a perk to your employees. So if you're a small business owner, in a lot of cases, you might be the only employee or you and your spouse might be the only employee or even you and your kids. There are ways to run a gym membership through your business in a way that is tax deductible. Again, be careful. Usually you can't discriminate where, you know, you might have a business with 50 employees and one of those is your spouse and you and your spouse are the only ones getting gym memberships and nobody else does. So be careful there. You want to make sure that you're not discriminating, you know, or doing something unsavory there. You've got to set these up right. I'm not saying that you can just claim those tax deductions for gym memberships or all these costs without going through the, the hurdles to, to set this up properly. You do need to work with your CPA. But I just want to be clear that these are expenses that you should be able to potentially claim as business deductions. Also, health and medical costs. I'm not talking about health care insurance, like health insurance premiums. I'll talk about that in the next bucket. But these are actually medical and health costs above your health insurance premium. So there's a number of different ways you can make those tax deductible. You could filter them through an HSA account, for example. You could have a health reimbursement plan for your business in some cases, if that makes sense for you. There's a lot of different ways that you could maybe make these health and medical costs above your typical health insurance premiums tax deductible. Your automobile, I used to have a car, even though I live in New York City, I got rid of it, but that automobile was necessary because of a business I had around real estate. I never drive anywhere in the city, and I was really only using that car for either to go meet with clients or you know, some people related to my, my tax business when I used to own a tax business, 
or my other businesses, including my real estate business where I would drive to, to check on properties. Cable and internet, you know, you should be able to easily come up with a way to tax deduct that for your home cable and internet. Home mortgage interest, you know, whether or not you're claiming that on Schedule A, whether or not you're using, you know, a mortgage to borrow against your home in order to fund your business or fund investment activities, whatever you're doing for that with that mortgage money, there should be a way to claim a tax deduction for that home mortgage interest. There are some limitations, yes, if your home is more than a certain amount, but there are strategies to get around that and to claim that, that mortgage interest elsewhere. It doesn't have to just be your Schedule A itemized deduction. It can be investment interest expense. It can be business interest expense, depending on what you're doing and what strategy you're using. Rent or depreciation on personal residence. So this is a partial deduction. You're not gonna get the whole thing. I'm not talking about rent for a business office. Obviously, if you rent an office where you operate your business and see clients and that kind of thing, that's obviously gonna be tax deductible in full. I'm talking about your personal residence here. So I deduct a, a big portion of my rent. It's obviously you know a percentage of, of my apartment that I use for my business and running my business. And if you own your home, it could be depreciation deduction. So you're gonna typically do this through the home office deduction if you've ever heard of that. So anyone who has a space that they use in their home exclusively for their business, or if you're a W-2 employee, exclusively for a side hustle, you could potentially deduct a piece of that rent or claim some depreciation deductions on your home if you own the home. All right, so personal vacations and vacation or second homes. I'm gonna talk about these together. So you can easily turn a personal vacation to a business expense depending on you know whether or not you set up a meeting with someone. You may not be able to deduct the full vacation. So you know if, if I were to go to Boston, you know partially for business and partially for pleasure, I'm typically only allowed to deduct the expenses that relate to the business piece of that trip. So you may not get the full deduction, but it is very easy and something you should always think about is how can I turn a personal vacation at least into a partial business deduction? Wanna be able to deduct some of those plane tickets, those rental cars, those hotels, that's, you know, if, you're, if your life is anything like mine, my vacations are one of my probably top five largest expenses. So anytime I can find a way to deduct a piece of that or all of that in some cases, then, you know, that's a great way to, to turn something from a personal to a tax deduction. Vacations and second homes. So we used to go to Cape Cod all the time. And what we ended up doing is just buying a rental property there. So if there's somewhere you travel a lot, think about buying a rental property or rental properties, have a business there. You know, if you don't wanna do rental properties, you could even set up a business there or whatever it is. But buy in that location because then you can turn what would have otherwise been, you know, personal vacations into business expenses or business trips. So also, you know, a vacation or second home, if you rent that out, that can be a rental property and you're able to deduct almost all of those expenses to the extent you use, you know, when you go stay in your vacation home or your second home, you are going to have to, you know, take that into account when you're thinking about what expenses are deductible and what aren't. But if you turn your vacation home or second home into a rental property, you're talking about being able to deduct almost every single thing, maybe not in full, but you're able to deduct cable and internet, you're able to deduct telephone, utilities, just depreciation on the property itself. It may just be a percentage for, you know, taking into account your personal use of that home, but that turns something that would have otherwise been just a cash outlay into a tax deduction and can be a great way to just honestly just monetize those homes. So that's a great way to, if you've got somewhere that you travel to a lot or somewhere that you wanna have a second home, then think about doing that. And also think about the opportunity cost. So one thing to think about when, you know, I was adding up, does it make sense to go buy this home in Cape Cod? We were paying five grand to go stay a week, you know, several times a year to go visit Cape Cod. So that's five grand I'm saving and have to take that into account every time I would have traveled there. So think about the expenses you would have spent on, you know, staying in a hotel or Airbnb in that area. You're now saving if you own the home and you're monetizing that home by renting it out and you're creating tax deductions that wouldn't have otherwise existed. Parties or social gatherings or any kind of event, those may or may not be tax deductible. There are ways to turn those into business expenses. I like to, to think of them as marketing type, you know, events, recruiting events. If you're, you know, looking to, to bring more people on board into your business, advertising, there's a lot of ways you can get creative and turn parties and social gatherings into business expenses. But if you're just having like a birthday party at your house for yourself and there's just no business reason for that, that's not gonna be tax deductible. So that's why this one's in this maybe bucket. Again, need to be careful here, need to work with your CPA. These are expenses that could potentially be tax deductible 
but you need to make sure you're taking advantage of the right strategies and putting thing, everything into place properly. The last bucket I'm gonna talk about is always deductible. So these are expenses that if you're a business owner, have a side hustle, you should be able to deduct all of these expenses. Obviously, I'm not gonna go into direct business costs. If you're you know, doing something that relates directly to the business, obviously that's deductible, I think that's pretty obvious. But things like your telephone, office supplies, research materials. I am an avid reader, I read so much. I read every single day, I read several books a week. So every book I buy is, is tax deductible because if it's nonfiction, it's related to business self-improvement around business and learning and finance and investing, the concepts that, that relate to my business. And I also used to own a business that was you know in the fiction reading space, so I was able to tax deduct all those books as well. So again, that's another way to come up with a creative strategy to deduct things that, first of all, are an area that you spend a lot of money in, so you're converting a personal, you know, big expense as personal into tax deductions, but it's probably, if you're spending a lot of area uh, money in that area, you probably have a passion for that area. So it makes sense to put some sort of business around that. And in this new world where, you know, most of the newer businesses are in the online space, it's really easy to create an online content business or, you know, e-commerce business in some cases, or, you know, you go out and start a podcast on the topic, for example. There's all kinds of ways you could easily create a new business or side hustle around something, make that tax deductible, and not have to spend a ton of time each week. Health insurance, you should always, if you're a business owner, you should always be able to, to get a tax deduction for that. Business meals, I think we know that, you know, there are limitations uh, on the meals, the deduction for the meals, it might only be 50%. In some cases but i think you know we all know that legal and professional fees so if you're paying someone for legal work and you know to, to help with your taxes tax planning tax return filings in a lot of cases the heavy lifting there is really around the business stuff so you can really make a, a case that you should be able to deduct all of those fees because they're really you know complicated because of your business not that your personal return takes a lot of work for example also a lot of cpas do this thing where They'll do your business return for X amount and then your personal return is thrown in for free, which I think is a great way to make, make the full expense tax deductible. I'm not saying that would necessarily withstand audit. It depends on the facts and circumstances. I'm just saying that, you know, there are strategies to, to create tax deductions for, for these types of things. Training and development courses, so events, seminars, books, again, anything that helps you with your business, anything that's reasonable, you know, as far as helping you grow your business. If you you know, run an e-commerce company and you're going to those e-commerce seminars every year, no, you know, no matter where they are, that's a tax deduction. That's a great way to travel somewhere, you know, and, and get a tax deduction for that trip that, you know, you would have otherwise not been able to do. Professional clubs. So I know I talked about social clubs, like country clubs are almost never tax deductible. These hunting clubs, you know, that are popular in the South, but professional clubs are obviously tax deductible. So if you're in, you know, some sort of group, um, you know, I know there's all kinds of uh, networking clubs and that type of thing. Those things are always going to be tax deductible. Insurance, so any insurance that relates to your business or is insurance that is needed because of your business, then, you know, that, that should also be tax deductible. You should definitely be claiming that on your return. Those costs can be quite high. I know a big cost for me is insurance every year, so I'm glad to have a tax deduction for that. Office space, so furniture, decorations, you know, anything that you're seeing in this video, there was a tax deduction claim for that. So anything you put in your office, if you work at home and you have a home office, if it's reasonable or necessary, I don't think you'd go out there and buy a Van Gogh painting and probably take a tax deduction for that. But reasonable artwork, you know, things like that should be able to, to be able to be claimed. You might have to depreciate some larger things like furniture. Also, if you have like a coffee maker, printer, obviously those things are, are tax deductions, laptops, computers, anything like that. Another big one is state and local taxes. So under current law, you're limited to the deduction for state and local taxes to $10,000. That came into effect with the Trump tax law changes. But if you have a business and you take advantage of certain strategies, depending on what state you're in, you might be able to deduct all of those state and local taxes that relate to your business income. So that's a great extra benefit. There can be huge savings from that especially if you live in a high tax state like I do. So make sure you take advantage of that. That's the SALT pass-through uh, tax entity uh, tax election. And that can allow you to deduct above the $10,000 state and tax, uh, local tax limitation. So this was just a quick overview, again, of just helping you frame the way you think about the world, how you think about your life, your passions, where you spend a lot of your time and money and how to think about things creatively in a way that you can legally claim tax deductions that you would not otherwise have been able to. So the last thing I'll mention is just make sure you work with a CPA. It's not as easy as just saying, 
oh, you know, I have this X business and I'm going to tax deduct everything that relates to that. It has to be a bona fide business. There's all kinds of rules that apply, you know, like with business meals and travel. Sometimes there's funky rules that you have to think about and limitations that could apply. So make sure you work with a CPA. Don't just go out and do this on your own. But hopefully you found this helpful as far as strategies that you can take tax deductions and turn your life and, and change your facts in a way to make more tax deductions than you would have otherwise been able to have.